how does this happen? Is this told to you the day of, a week, a month? Who's informing you that this big <laughs> is going to occur for you? So um, the thing about WrestleMania, I don't know if I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still done this way, but WrestleMania, it, for the most part, uh, m- when you see a match, it was put together that day. Hmm. When you see a match on Raw, SmackDown, it was put together, sometimes put together right before they went through the curtain. Um, oftentimes, you know, it, over a period of a couple hours during the day, um, you know, same thing with uh, with pay-per-views. But WrestleMania, it's such a big deal that they would they would have us, you know, you, you go in and you take over a city. It's going to be in L.A. this year, right? Oh, yeah. So they'll be there uh, for an entire week. And they will have all these appearances and they'll take over whatever hotel they're going to stay at. They'll take over that whole hotel pretty much. Um, and uh, then you'll just do appearances. And, and then one of the things is for like two hours of every day, you have this ballroom with it's got a couple rings in there. And for us, they had a bunch of ladders of every shape and size. They've got crash pads in there. And we would go in with, uh, I believe it was Johnny Ace and um, Michael Hayes, who are our producers, and the eight of us, and just, here's what we want to do. And I remember uh, for the first three days, Edge was going over. Edge was going to win it again. And then, um, like, the second to last day in practice, Michael Hayes came in and said, uh, they want they want to put Kennedy over. And um, and I, I remember at the time, like, whenever something like, cool like that happens, yeah, I don't get excited about it. I have it's it's really weird, and I I almost feel like it's kind of messed me up in my real life because when something <laughs> cool happens, I my wife will be super excited about something, and I'll just be really reserved about it because there's always the chance that tomorrow they're going to change it back again, and, or they're going to give it to somebody else. You know, that's just the way that it goes. Um. But yeah, like the day before they, and then we came up with uh, the finish. I remember, I remember, you know, they were like, uh, we got to get the little guy involved. We want to get Hornswoggle involved somehow. And uh, Horns, it, it, it was, they wanted an interaction between me and Finley and Hornswoggle. And uh, I remember seeing Dylan looking up at that ladder. He's like, do you, do you think you could give me, the Finley roll off the off the ladder, and I was like, "Wow, we could try it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably break you, but we could do it." And we just had to figure out how to do it, and we messed around for a little while, and we had you know input from the other guys, and it ended up being <clears throat> probably one of my most memorable moments in in the business. Yeah, that you know that little back and forth, and giving Dylan the the Finley roll off the off the ladder. Um, it was cool. I remember we're in the moment. We're in front of eighty three thousand people in Ford Field, millions of people watching on pay per view. I give it to him, and I remember when I gave it to him, he rolled away from me and he went under the under the ropes and he was just on the apron. And I couldn't. I I had to do some other stuff. I think Finley came in and I messed around with him for a little bit, and then finally I I got bumped. And I ended up in the corner near him, and I was like, "Hey, man, you okay?" And he was like, "Yeah, dude, you okay?" <laughs> it was like, like he was twiddling his thumbs. Yeah, man, I'm cool. Are you cool? Oh my god! <clears throat> it was just a cool moment. This super big thing that's happening, and uh, we're just like having a chat. Uh, he, that's remember, amazing. There was another moment in that because, like, my first independent match, I or my second independent match excuse me um i was on a show with with cm punk and uh it was in like whitewater wisconsin just this little little venue i think there was like less than 100 people in attendance i got i wrestled a guy who was uh he was a fake golga you remember golga oh yeah he was it was was actually earthquake underneath a mask yeah well this was uh somebody pretending to be earthquake under a mask it was a fake fake john tenta ripoff yes yep so when i first started on the business there were tons of those like every show would have golga um 
some guys even tried mankind um huh. there was a uh, fake uh doink I oh, yeah. fake, fake doink has been like a thing still yeah. going on today there was like eight shows that were going on in the midwest and one of my buddies put put together a, a wrestling newsletter and uh like Doink the Clown appeared on eight wrestling shows simultaneously around the Midwest. He's a magician. He's magic. Yep. But, uh, but, so Punk and I, it, the last people that you see in that match are Punk and I are up at the top of the ladder. We're like duking it out and going back and forth. And as we're punching each other, he's like, hey, man, this is a kind of a far cry from Whitewater, Wisconsin, don't you think? <laughs> so that was another cool little, little moment. That's amazing. Yeah, because everyone always you always see the highlight reel of you destroying Hornswoggle off that ladder with the flip, but uh you don't get to hear the the small pieces, little doses, little breadcrumbs you're giving me today with you and CM Punk punching each other on top of a twenty foot ladder in front of eighty thousand fans, but yet you're having a nice conversation. Yeah. 